think I achieved a new level of oops. Ooh, doggy. Looks like I got attacked by the Wolverine on this side. And uh, not only did I mess up the bed of the truck somehow, but I busted a rear spring hanger. This part right here is supposed to be welded right here. Hey, if you're new to the channel, my name is Thad and my wife Kayla and I and our little guy Tucker travel all around the United States and Canada teaching the Bible and bringing the Word of God to life in some pretty fun and creative ways. And in order to do that, we haul our RV with us as we live full time on the road and we end up taking it into some places that it was probably not designed to go. And so today we're going to show you a little behind the scenes of what it looks like putting our 46 foot, 20,000 pound toy hauler in a place it was not meant to be. And it turned out to be even harder to get it out of the location than it was to get it in to the location. I'm up here road grading by foot. This is the road we've got to come up. And in order to make this corner in front of me, all this ditch right here, especially this part right here. I've got to get some of that filled in so I don't drag my back of my fifth wheel in there when I have all that weight pulling at 20,000 pounds trying to come uphill. Not much gravel down here to fill that hole. If only there was some kind of invention to get all the loose gravel from up there and collect it and carry it down and dump it in this thing. If you guys know of anything that exists, let me know in the comments. Of course, I don't have a shovel. Don't even have a bucket. Couldn't even find my right sunglasses. <laughs> Off to a good start today. So I'm road grading by foot. All right, road grading done. Sitting on the sweet little scooter. And I'm gonna uh, run back down to camp fire up the truck, do a test drive with just the truck only, kind of pack down all that loose stuff. I just shoveled down by foot into the ruts and holes and do a run over it a couple times, get my line right, and then I'm gonna go hook up to the 20,000 pound sledge, throw her in four low and lock up the rear end and see if we can climb out of this hole. Four low, no traction control, and rear diff locked.
after coming out of there, I have a different perspective for what the rest of the roads are like. Not <laughs> impressed whatsoever. So I just hear Kayla yelling from the front, hey, you bent the truck. And I'm like, yeah, I've hit the, back. I've hit the bed of the truck a few times, no big deal. A little bend here, nothing, a little ball jack won't pop out. I think I achieved a new level of oops. Oh, look at that. That is not a beautiful thing. We have some TLC to do, which means how does the bottom of the fifth wheel look? I got a little bit of a, not too bad. I got a bad gouge there. I got a bad gouge there. How are we doing this way? Got some bad, ooh, doggy. Look like I got attacked by the Wolverine on this side. All right, we're doing a little walk around, checking everything out before we hit the road after that crazy uh, pull up that hill. And uh, not only did I mess up the bed of the truck somehow, but I busted a rear spring hanger. This part right here is supposed to be welded right here. As you can see, it ain't there anymore. This is the face. This is the face of a wife that's being nice and not saying I told you so uh, on camera. <laughs> She's saving that for the ride, no, for the two hour ride to Salome. I never say it. I don't need to. <laughs> I think what she's saying is I get to give myself a big pep talk about what a bad boy I was and how unwise I was. But we made some good memories down there, but I did push, I did push uh, my luck beyond the limits of the equipment, apparently. So lesson learned next time. I don't know. I'll probably still try and go places I shouldn't go. That's just kind of part of my DNA. But uh, I may, I may have a little more pause. I think I have a, a little more pause gained. That's it. All right, off to Salome. This is the Winden one stop for everything. Washer, hardware, post office, groceries. It also turned out to be the place that pointed me to the welder. When I started making phone calls, I just called the first local place and it said like uh, cafe, hardware, grocery store or something. I'm like, if, surely somebody there will know if there's a welder in the area. And uh, first lady that answered the phone, told her my situation, and she said, call this place. Second phone call, called that place. And they knew exactly what was up and said, yep, no problem, come on in. To go see a guy named Tony with a welder and uh, see if we can't get fixed up and back in business. Fingers crossed we can get it all put back together and still get back on the road today. If not, We've got a uh, unexpected stop in Salome. Fingers crossed, I still got a tire hanging on back there. There. That's it right there, Salome. Auto parts and welding. I know, and she said there's a U Haul too, so this is our spot. We're just going to stop right over here.
Yeah, let's get the water, dude. We need a welder, go to Salome. We need propane, go to Salome. We need a dump station, go to Salome. We need to turn in 0.2 miles, go to Salome. What a day. It has been a long run getting up out of our spot and then uh, finding somebody to do the repairs and then lots of driving. We've still got about another 40 miles to go and we just pulled into this place to get fuel and I wanted to give you an idea of what it looks like to pull a 46 foot toy hauler into a gas station. It's not the easiest thing to do. It takes a little bit of uh, advanced planning luckily this place is pretty slow in this uh, area so let me flip it around that's a full-size truck a couple of small cars and then there's that which really doesn't look that much different than a semi-trailer behind a pickup truck. This thing, it's a bit of a beast, this rolling home that we have. Apparently, apparently Tucker's ready to go. He's barking. Are you upset, buddy? Are you mad? Are you not happy? Oh yeah? Is it time to go? Mm-hmm.